Get informed, get inspired, and get connected. CannabisRadio.com presents NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice. The National Cannabis Industry Association is the only national trade organization representing the businesses of the legal cannabis industry. NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice covers a range of topics, including the rapidly evolving political and policy changes that affect our industry, news and events of importance to cannabis professionals, and features on companies, individuals, and campaigns at the cutting edge of the cannabis industry. NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice begins now. All right, we are in San Francisco at NCIA's 7th Annual Cannabis Business Summit and Expo, and I'm your host, Bethany Moore, NCIA's Deputy Director of Communications, kicking off one of my first interviews of the day with Alvaro Portillo of Balca, the Bay Area Latina Cannabis Alliance. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Bethany. This is a great opportunity. Absolutely. So it's great to be in San Francisco, and you're from the Bay Area here, which has a rich history of medical marijuana, cannabis legalization. What are your thoughts and experience around that? I mean, you know, like you say, this is pretty much the birth of a lot of things that that are happening now at global scale, right? Like back in the days, you know, even when prior to uh, recreational legalization in the city, it was kind of an understatement, you know, like uh, uh, access, it was, it, it was always there. And, and yeah, I'm really excited to see it grow on a global scale. Most definitely, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's really great to be hosting the show here. And it's been a while, of course, so we're requiring vaccinations, proof of vaccination. But it's, it's great to be here with people, right? And, like, see your faces. It's just... It's, it's different than Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting, right? Are you seeing a lot of, is it like a family reunion it, when you come here? It is pretty much, you know, a lot of really uh, familiar faces. Mike, we love him so much. I never have the pleasure to meet him, but now in person, you know, we have. But in, and just like that, so many, so many faces and people that we've been interacting for the last couple of years via Zoom or Instagram. Uh, now we get to see each other and shake hands and it feels great. You know, the space that you have guys have created here is, is pretty, pretty special. Thank you. I agree. So thanks for being here. So what are some of your goals while you're here at the Cannabis Business Summit and Expo? Okay, first and foremost, we would like to uh, just amplify a little bit more the voice of Balca, you know, the Bay Area Latino Cannabis Alliance. And our five pillars are education, professional development, civil right, business ownership, and culture. So it is super interesting because you see all those interact in this space. So just pretty much amplify that and just make your network grow and, and just um, show uh, the space to people. Because what we do is really, really embrace and empower the voices of the people. Anybody, you know, anybody can. Uh, we have a really incredible, the first bilingual, actually, newsletter in the country for cannabis and we, we embrace everybody, you know, small operators, business owners, uh, entrepreneurs, people trying to get into the, into the industry that doesn't have a space. That's what we do, embrace them, you know. So uh, that's one of the, the main goals, you know, pretty much just continue our work and just making sure that more people can access us so their stories can be heard and, and people can understand about them. Absolutely. Yeah. So that talks to the the greater need and focus in our industry on diversity, equity, and inclusion, which thankfully, both on the business side and from policymakers' perspective, it's becoming more of a focus, more important. What are your thoughts about that? I think I think it is it is crucial to continue to support, but it's more important to provide the right tools for people to succeed because it, it, it's a thing like you know everybody talks about the equity like the golden ticket, but I mean a golden ticket is nothing if you don't know how to use it. You could be used instead. So I believe that we need to really develop all the, all the equity participants and everybody who want to be in the industry so they can truly find their success at this search and their companies could be strong so they can withstand all the struggles that we're going through and that we, they're going to come by because this is just the tip of the iceberg, I believe. You know, there are going to be bigger challenges when federal legalization, if, if it happens, 
the, the small operators are going to face. So I think, you know, what, what Mike Leruto is doing and uh, Christine De La Rosa, they're just truly trying to embrace us and put us in that type of position. And, and I think just more of that is what we need, and, and it's great. Yeah, thank you. Let's take a little bit of a deeper dive, if you don't mind, about some of those challenges. Um, you know, some things that come to mind is, well, uh, expunging records, um, access to capital for investment. What else is, is coming up in this in this world of challenges for for equity? Yeah, I feel, you know, like just the challenges that, you know, uh, a seasoned CEO will face in these type of circumstances. There are things that are really hard to teach to somebody how to navigate, you know, because beside the capital, that is a crucial part that that's honestly what we need the most to start, but then to be able to sustain and keep going is that really the, the education and, and try to show them the, the path in a way and bring the resources so they can fight back. You know, it's like, for instance, we have a lot of people a lot that is in the industry right now, you know, some of the first licenses are really close to Balca, retail licenses in the city. Cindy de la Vega is one of them right here in Union Square. And the challenges don't stop there. You know, it's, it's this misconception that once you're all good rolling, you got the first dispensary, whatever, like that's just part of it. So I feel like if we just continue providing support in the channels so people can feel comfortable in to have access because a lot of these things we just don't know you know like when you when you're facing a, a big trouble with workers or regulation these are things that somebody that is seasoned in it have the tools and, and and know how to navigate it may be somebody who's coming from the equity or from the uh, unregulated market getting into it it get overwhelmed and a lot of times will be face will be a big wall even if if the things are not that hard for them in that aspect so it's just access and really really like uh, have access to the, the great CEOs who have access to the great leaders so they can really uh, teach us how to do things better mm. I feel I feel that's that's one of the things that that really are gonna be a game-changer in my opinion great thank you for that insight yeah, no um, yeah and I appreciate your involvement with NCIA your group Balka is an allied association with our allied association program so that's wonderful that's an opportunity for us as a national organization and Falca as yeah. a Hyper local specific right. organization to share resources and share knowledge back and forth with each other. What are some other things you enjoy about being associated with NCIA? I mean, again, it's, it's just it's like the, the diversity of, of the access that you guys provide. You know, it's like I, I really appreciate that. I, I, I love hearing from people that is like doing the big moves because you get those tiny like spots of light and you're like, yes, you know, you can, you can. Uh, you, you can just follow through and like learn more, you know? So I, I love what NCIA is doing to embrace not only equity, but minorities and, and everybody who's trying to be in the industry and grow. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to no check problem. in with us. Uh, I hope you have a great time at the rest of the show. NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice will return once we give a voice to our sponsors. All right, we're here in San Francisco at NCIA's seventh annual Cannabis Business Summit and Expo, sitting in our podcast studio where I get to interview NCIA members, guests, speakers, board members. And today, right now, my guest is Anthony Jenkins from Next Level Edibles, who's also one of NCIA's DEI scholarship recipients, part of our diversity, equity, and inclusion program. Thank you for sitting down with me today, Anthony. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's start by talking about our DEI program as well. Um, our goal here at NCIA is to right the wrongs from the war on drugs in addition to advancing a responsible regulated cannabis industry. What's been your experience in this program with NCIA in the cannabis industry so far? Well, it's funny because uh, I got an email that finding out that you guys had an equity program and I was like, what is NCIA? And I started, I, I was new to the industry at the time, didn't know much about it and started doing some research. I was like, okay, cool. They're, they're fighting for us. This is pretty cool that you, that they have a program that's specifically for equity people. And um, I, I joined um, through the program. And um, one of the coolest parts of the program is there is a weekly meeting held by Mike, L L L I'm going to hack his Lamudo. last name. Lamudo. Lamudo. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much. And it is a wealth of knowledge. Not only is Mike awesome, but there's a lot of other equity people on there, and they all drop pieces of gold every week. So it's been a, a, a must 
it must be on call for me, even though I'm juggling so many things. But there's so much information and so many great connections have been made. It's really helped to push our business forward. So I'm very thankful that, that NCIA has the program and has that weekly call. Excellent, we're glad to have you as a part of it as well. Now, where are you based again? We're headquartered in uh, Oakland, California. Great, so yeah. the Bay Area has yes. a very, very rich history of medical marijuana, medical uh, programs and caregiving programs and legalization. What's, your, what's been your experience seeing that evolution over many years here in the Bay Area? Well, I got into it pretty late. So um, before, about the last seven or eight years I've been working on this business, before that I was in a completely different world and really wasn't paying much attention to the whole cannabis landscape. Um, and then one day I made some infused edibles and I was like, oh, maybe I should start taking a look at the cannabis industry. And in the years that I've been in it, um, we've seen it, it go to being, you know, fully, fully legalized medicinally. And um, it's, it, the program in California has some, some issues, but it's moving in the right direction. And of course it has issues. It's ran by the government. Um, but I think its goals are great. And um, it's definitely um, helping and empowering and um, financing a lot of different people. And, and I think that's great. Excellent. So the cannabis industry in general just has its own litany of challenges in general. That's an understatement. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we've got our banking challenges. We have our IRS tax code woes, as it were. Packaging challenges, labeling challenges, Compliance. testing challenges. <laughs> oh, right. The long, long list. Let's talk a bit more about the challenges in the cannabis industry and also through the lens of diversity. Yes. Um, well, we're a uh, manufacturing company. We make infused coconut oil and infused brown sugar. Um, a lot of the challenges, well, we face most of them, but one thing that's been a huge challenge for us is just a lot of the testing laws. Um, and uh, for cannabis products, they need to be a specific dosage. And a lot of the regulations around that has been a challenge. Uh, one of the products that we wanted to release was an infused popcorn. But if you look at the surface areas of popcorn, each kernel is so different. So to make one bag the exact same dosage as another bag is almost impossible. Um, but you're going to need to do that if you want to have it on shelves in California. Uh, we're hoping that the industry will become a little bit more lenient as it grows and becomes more knowledgeable and will move to more of a, of a, of a, a, a relationship kind of like Amsterdam has, where it's a little bit more free-flowing. But as long as you're following the, the proper food standards, you can get products on the shelves. Mm -hmm. um, cannabis is, is regulated. The, the, the edible side, almost like pharmaceuticals. And it's good that they're trying to keep the standards high to keep people healthy, but uh, there's a little much to be said with that. A bit of overreach. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a phrase I like to repeat that cannabis is regulated more heavily than plutonium. Yes, yes it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no shortage of challenges. Are there any other challenges as, um, as, as a, as a person of color in this industry that you could speak to? Well, um, it's hard for me to speak to all of those because I've been a person of color my whole life. Um, but we have had challenges. Um, just as far as finding fi finances, mm -hmm. uh, we are an, an equity company, as you mentioned earlier. And when you're speaking to an, a potential investors, when you say, hey, we're an Oakland equity company, one, they're hanging from Oakland, two, that we're, we're equity, um, it comes with a stigma attached to it, um, both, of, both of those things. And so it's harder to get uh, investment when, when, you know, when those two things are associated with your company in some circumstances. Um, and, and that has definitely been a challenge. Mm, mm. Wow. And this is an expensive industry. You probably know. This oh, is yeah. an extremely expensive industry to be in. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the proper uh, investment going into it, it's going to be a lot of hurdles that you're going to have to face. Um, and the fact that we're, those hurdles seem just a little bit higher without investment. And again, we don't have as many accesses to the resources as uh, people from other minorities. What do you think the issue is there? Is it about educating investors? Is it about changing where the investment money is flowing from what's what's the linchpin there it's 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 i think it's a probably multifaceted um i think the history of investment in the united states doesn't t favor um my minorities as much if you look at who usually gets investments um so we do have to kind of change the narrative that that most investors you know invest with uh their thought process um but at the same time it's 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 institutionalized so 
you're almost going to have to set up certain rules and laws and regulation in order to make it a more equal playing field. Um, almost like an equity program. That's the reason that we have equity programs. Good start. It's, it's the goal is to make it more equitable. It'll never be 50-50 because that's not the way it's set up. But as long as it's helping to move the, the, the band over uh, in our favor, that's what we want. And I think there are certain laws that can be put in, in implemented, um, certain guidelines that investment uh, companies can follow to make it more equitable for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of work to be done there for sure. Yes. Um, if you were to look into your crystal ball today mm -hmm. <laughs> and make some predictions for where the industry will be or even what you hope to see in the next couple of years, what would that look like? Yes. So uh, I don't have a crystal ball, um, <laughs> but I foresee in the future, what I'd like to foresee is more of an Amsterdam-based style. Um, I see people stopping into a coffee, store, a coffee shop like Starbucks, being able to get their espresso and an infused cupcake. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where we want to be, because that's actually what we're originally known for, our mini infused cupcakes. <laughs> um, yeah. That's the way we'd like to see the industry go and, and remove some of the bureaucracy that, that's currently clogging it up, keeping it to be that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Agree, absolutely. Um, five, let's say five years ago, we used to think that federal legalization would have been achieved by 2020. <laughs> uh, it was almost you know, over a year ago. Yeah, I feel like point. people keep saying, it's five years away, it's five years away, it's five sure. years away for the last 30. <laughs> so things have been a little strange the last couple of years that maybe have impacted or slowed that down. But w w when do you foresee the federal legalization mark being hit? Um, I was, again, hoping that it would already be done by now. Yeah. Um, but I, to sound like a broken record, it's five years away. Another um, five years. <laughs> I don't think that the current administration is going to do it, although I was hoping that they, hoping that they would. Um, but we really need to open it up because there's so many restrictions when each state is governing its, its own laws. And it makes it really restrictive for small companies, large companies to expand into new areas because those, those states are completely shut off to them based upon uh, federal ordinance. Right. Um, but things are, are, are changing state by state. Um, it would be really interesting if each state legalizes cannabis and it's still federally illegal, right? I can't see that happening. Um, and st I feel like states are starting to go left and right towards the cannabis side. So it'll eventually happen, but um, hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as your experience here at the conference, how's that been going for you? Oh man, uh, being at this conference is a blessing. This is our, our first conference of this nature ever being at. Oh, wow. um, this is our very first booth as well. You picked a good one. Um, yes, it's <laughs> been a beaut. Uh, the People's Ecosystem bought a bunch of booths for uh, equity companies. And so big ups to the People's Ecosystem. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to uh, be up here with the big wigs. And uh, it's been great. We've made some great connections. Uh, shook some great hands, and I look forward to catching some of the panels as well. So you you have a booth in our bloom section of yes. the show, is that right? Correct, just across from the the, the people's e uh, ecosystem, another right. bloom booth. Yeah, that's a new thing that we've done for the first time at this show, uh, where we're allowed to have real infused f products and real flour on the show floor. No consumption, of course. Yes. Mm, no samples. Yes. But it's the first time at a business to business event we've been able to showcase real products on our expo floor. So that's a really exciting new thing for us. It's called Bloom. Yeah. Um, and it's just down there on the other end of the expo floor. And, and that's huge because yeah. cannabis is so many different areas, but when it really comes down to it, it's a plant. It's actually it's something you can touch, feel, and smell. And so to be able to see it at a conference is huge. It's almost like me telling you about a car, but not giving you a test drive or showing you a picture. Like it's, it's a hard sale. But no, it's great that you guys have the, have the Bloom area. Yeah, I think in the past we were allowed to have like hemp plants on the show floor, which, <laughs> oh, cool, it looks like a cannabis plant. Oh, how yeah. fun. But like, wow, to really see what you would see on retail dispensary shelves. store shelves yes. is here at the show as well. In addition, of course, to all the machines, rolling machines. The background stuff. The, yeah. the lighting and all the stuff that you need to get to that product, right? Yes. Yeah. And there's amazing things out there. Um, someone was just telling me about a bladeless trimmer. I was like, wow, the technology for cannabis is really a long way. And I spoke with another gentleman whose company does uh, biomarking for, for cannabis. 
This industry is huge and it's just growing. I know, it's mind blowing. The, the science and technology and innovation is just, I think they call it Moore's Law, right? <laughs> no, no relation. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, like every year over year, we're learning more about cannabinoid science and terpenes. Yes, and, you yes. know, the general public has heard of THC and CBD. Yes. But now there's CBN and CBG and like, wow, one can help you sleep. And yes. I, I just love where we're going in that direction. No, totally. And a lot of people were coming by the booth and I was explaining to them, they were asking, you know, why does this edible feel different than this edible? So we start talking about the entourage effects and distillates, first isolate, first full spectrum. And yeah, the, the information is getting out there slowly, but we still have some more educating to do. And this is a great way to do it. Absolutely. Are there any panel sessions or talks that you're looking forward to? Yes. Um, anytime uh, Christina De La Rosa talks, I try to catch it. She's a phenom. Powerhouse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to get in her wake to be successful. Um, I'm going to try to catch some of her, um, one of her talks. Uh, in addition, there was one on investment that we'd like to be a part of as well. I would just, it's, we've been pretty busy at the booth, so it's just Good. if I can get some time away from that <laughs> um, and try to juggle which one is going to be the best, you know, return on my investment. That's a good problem to have. Yeah, yeah. Return on my $0 investment. Again, thank you, e People's Ecosystem. <laughs> and Christine De La Rosa of the People's Ecosystem uh, has recently been elected NCIA's Board of Directors. Yes, yes. So we are happy to have her there as well. She's very, very involved in NCIA. So happy to uh, be bringing this, this group together. And it's so great to be here. I feel like you know, I'm meeting new people. Yes. We're seeing people in person for the first time because yes, it's been yes. very virtual for a couple years. <laughs> yes. um, so it just feels like a family reunion every totally. time we get together. It's funny. I've given three people hugs who I've never met in person before, but we've just been Zoom friends for two to three years. And I remember I, I saw um, Lady Gemini Carr and I was like, oh, that's Dawn's company. She's here. But I've never seen her in person. But it's great to, to embrace her finally and be like, hi, it's awesome to see you here. I agree. Well, NCI's three pillars uh, are the education, of course, and the advocacy, and also community. Community, right? yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us today, Anthony. It's nice to meet you in person as well. Totally, totally. Um, you were featured in our blog a few months ago uh, as an equity member spotlight, so you can read that blog about Anthony Jenkins and Next Level Edibles on NCIA's website. I hope you have a great rest of your time at the show. Thank, thank you. you for stopping by. Yeah, thank you for having me. The opinions expressed on this CannabisRadio.com program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of CannabisRadio.com. Any rebroadcast, republication, or retransmission of this program without proper consent is prohibited.